기종을 이제 실어주는 그런 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 그런
and mm -hmm. uh, spaghetti, mm -hmm. like uh, noodles. Yes. This is indeed a uh, pork and, mm -hmm. and steak is not, that has a life is useful. Yes. Uh, Korean have uh, uh, rice and. Mm, so you mean because of the geography and the food, different geography and food? So Gerd Hofstede is the most famous person studying about culture. He says culture is the collective programming of a human mind. So it's like your mind was programmed from a young age, like a computer was programmed, that distinguishes the members of one human group from those of another. So culture is a system of collectively held values. So we all have the same values. <coughs> Edgar Schnein, culture is the deeper level of basic assumptions and beliefs that are shared by members of an organization that operate unconsciously, unconsciously without thinking, and define in a basic taken for granted. Taken for granted means we don't need to say or talk about it, just everybody takes it for granted, means everybody accepts that way without thinking about it, okay? And I know they take that, those things for granted. So you take for granted that uh, just we use chopsticks for eating, okay? I take for granted we use forks for eating. Oh. <clears throat> uh, traditional definition of culture, in, you can find in the dictionary, Culture is the sum of values, rituals, symbols, beliefs, and thought processes that are learned, shared by a group of people, and transmitted from generation to generation. So we learn the culture by growing up, adjusting to new cultures. So here we have uh, some origins of culture. So geography, history, technology, Social institutions, our family, religion, the media. This is where our culture comes from. Then we have the elements of culture, which we saw in the definition. Values, rituals, symbols, beliefs. And then we have the consequences for business. We have management style. And for consumers, how they're going to buy. Right, the decisions they make about buying and their behavior in buying. Which is important for the people to understand in marketing and business. So let's start with each one. So geography. So climate is very important. So if we think about the northern climate in Canada and the southern climate in, uh, let's say, Saudi Arabia, very hot and dry, uh, some kind of machinery that works well in Canada doesn't work in Saudi Arabia because of the dust. It's very hot and the dust, so the machine can break down easily. On the other hand, if you send some car that's used in Saudi Arabia to Canada, it won't work well either, because Canada has a different environment. So in the winter time, uh, they put something on the roads and the car doesn't go well. Okay? So climate can in influence uh, the culture. Uh, topography, the mountainous, is the country mountainous or not mountainous? In Ireland we don't have any mountains, in Korea you have a lot of mountains, quite a little bit different. In Ireland people play a lot of golf, because the land is very flat. Okay. Uh, flora, fauna, and microbiology. So these things can affect our industries too. <coughs> so geography itself influences history economics and the way of thinking. Uh, historically, innovation spread more quickly from east to west and north to south because we have a big land mass. If we look at the world, you can travel by land from east to west, right from China all the way across to Portugal. But now, north to south, there's more ocean and sea in the middle, right? So, uh, <coughs> also on the coast, a lot of cities, most cities around the world are on the coast. So the port cities, your geography, where you are, makes a big difference. Do you understand port? Yes. So the port city, all the goods come in out and leave on the port. We can see all, almost all of the world's major cities are on the coast. If you look at China, Shanghai, Beijing, Hong Kong, Korea, Seoul, Busan, right? So uh, if a country is landlocked, 
doesn't have any port, it's more difficult for the country to get their goods to another country. In Europe, we talk about the core and the periphery of Europe. So we can see in the European crisis, there is the core of Europe and the periphery. Okay? So here is Ireland. Portugal and Spain is out here. Right? Italy is down here. Greece is here. Okay? So these problems have, countries have more economic problems. And just generally in Europe, they traditionally have the economic problem. Why? Because they're on the outside. They can't transport their goods. But if you're Germany in here, in the middle, or France, you can very easily transport your goods everywhere. Right? The transport is easier. You're in the center. Okay? These countries on the outside, uh, Ireland is, la is hard. Only since they invented the internet, Ireland's economy started to get better, right? Because we, do we, we don't have to travel across the water with the internet. Okay? So, uh, <coughs> we also have a strong correlation between latitude, climate, and GDP. Another important thing is mosquitoes. If your country has mosquitoes, you might have some health problem like malaria. So especially in Africa, Sub-Sahara Africa, a lot of countries have malaria, they have low GDP, right? And they have other problems. Then, uh, <coughs> we can see that uh, some climate, there's a kind of a band across the world, let's say here, say from France, across this latitude, the farmland is very good because it's not too hot or it's not too cold. Okay? If we go down further, say Morocco and in northern Africa, 2,000 years ago the farmland used to be very good here, but now it's too dry. They don't have enough water and land is not as good, right? So we can even, even in the US, the US has a big belt in the middle where they grow a lot of their crops with the good climate. Okay? This goes across also Korea, Japan is on this latitude. Okay? So, we can see those kind of countries have higher GDP. History. So, uh, Americans, they have their history of the pilgrims who came to America first. And Adam Smith, who wrote his book about their experiences. And America, as a result, is a very capitalistic society. Do you understand capitalism? How do you say capitalism? Jabun Jui? So that's influenced by the U.S. history. Also, in the U.S., a lot of people who like the risk. U.S. people like risk. U.S. managers like taking more risk than German managers, for example. Right? So a lot of people from Europe went to the U.S. They took, they took a big risk. Okay? And then they started to move across the U.S., also taking the risk. They were called pioneers. So that kind of history and system affects the management culture, affects the consumer behavior, okay, that kind of way. Uh, for example, wars in the Middle East, they thought they didn't like the U.S., so they don't buy Coca-Cola in the Middle East, because they don't like the U.S., okay? Uh, they have their own cola, Mecca Cola, Muslim Up, and Arab Cola. All right. India also had a very negative experience with the British Empire. The British took over India. So India has a negative opinion to the outsiders. Okay? The outside companies, a little bit negative. Not everybody, but just we can see in the culture that uh, they can be negative in that way. right? Uh, in Germany, they had the history of Hitler and the propaganda. You know the propaganda? You understand propaganda? Yeah. So nowadays, Germany has one of the strictest marketing laws in the world because they don't like propaganda. So their marketing law is very strict. Okay? You can't say, like, we're the best company in the world. You can't say that in Germany. Okay? So you, you, they have strict laws. So the history affects the culture. So just discuss with your partner. How have history and geographic, geography influenced culture in your area? So how do you think your culture in Korea or in China or South Africa is affected by the history and geography of your country? So discuss with your partner.
surrounded. Okay, so I, first of all, I'll give an example from Ireland. So in Ireland, uh, we had the history of the colonization by the UK, and the UK had a system of a uh, very hierarchical system like Lord, right? The king is at the top, and then you have some Lord, and then underneath the Lord you have some landowner. Then underneath the landowner you had some peasant who just works on the land, right? So they tried to enforce this system on Irish people. So Ireland got independence in 1920. So these days Irish people don't like people who think they're higher than the other people, right? Because the English always thought they were higher than the Irish. And they tried to make some system in Ireland where they had the lord with the castle, right? And then the next person on the lower level. So Irish people don't like if you think you're like a lord, right? Do you understand lord? Have you seen in a movie or something like that? Yes. Right? It's like somebody in UK just with special title. Okay? So uh, Irish people, if you go to Ireland, you shouldn't be arrogant. And you shouldn't talk about yourself arrogantly. Do you understand arrogant? Yes. You should try to be very humble. Then the geography in Ireland. Uh, Ireland is a very wet country, rains about 180 days in 365 days, so almost every second day it rains. Do you like rain? No. Do you like depressing weather? No. no. But because of that, Ireland has a good music and literature industry. Because the people can't do much outside, they can't play tennis. <laughs> if the wind is 50 kilometers an hour and the plane is going sideways, you can't play tennis. <laughs> So we have to do something else, so they write books or play music, so Irish, Irish Ireland has, do you know Westlife? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. no, it's a modern, that's just a pop group, right? Not a good example. But. <laughs> In the past, they had uh, U2 and other very famous, James Joyce, do you know James Joyce? Really. If you study English literature, you would know James Joyce, right? or <laughs> William Butler Yeats. So anyway, Ireland has a strong music industry and arts, strong arts and music and literature industry, okay? So what about China? Can you tell us about China? How have history and geography affected China? Chinese students? Yes?
the rocks in Beijing, as you know, uh, rocks in Beijing, there are not like the rocks in Korea, like there are a lot of mountain rocks. So in Beijing, I think like the selling bicycles can, can make a booming business because uh, the rocks care a lot of people to ride a bicycle easily, like here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I saw a lot of people on bicycles in China, oh, yeah. a lot of bicycle lanes. Okay, what about South Africa? So South Africa, we were colonized by the British and the Dutch um, in the 19th century. I can't remember the dates exactly. But they caused, they caused segregation within our communities, which made us like to come together and like break down the segregation. Um, so that kind of influenced our industry parts. Geographically, in my area, mostly it's dry land. So farming was mostly able to farm a lot because like, the, the soil was rich enough to, to grow agricultural um, backgrounds. Does South Africa have the best agricultural land in Africa? I, I wouldn't say in Africa, but it's one of the best in agriculture. Okay. What about Korea? Has uh, history and geography influenced culture in Korea? Any Korean student can answer. We have a lot of Korean students. <coughs> and O one. What do you think? What you mean that you can put the internet signal on top of yeah. the mountain? Yeah. Okay. So the next one is technology. That affects the culture. So we have air transportation, the internet, bird control, air conditioning. So of course, uh, when there was air transportation, the world's culture can change a lot because people can travel and meet each other people in another country. Uh, the internet, again, makes the communication very easy between people. So we can see that uh, we can share the ideas, right? Share the products for marketing across countries. Uh, birth control is an unusual one, but birth control meant that we can have more women in the workplace, okay? They can work uh, make more careers and these days we can sell women have a lot of spending power compared to 50 or 100 years ago right so the women has more spending power we can market more products at women okay in Ireland they have 50% uh, of 35 year old women are unmarried so that's they call them like super singles because they're not married and they earn a good salary and so they are a very good uh, customer, right? They buy a lot of things like cosmetics and other thing, other handbags and uh, books, anything, right? Yeah. So air conditioning also helps in the, uh, has helped to develop in the co warm countries. So social institutions like family, religion, religion is an important factor of culture you want to understand well about different countries, studying about the religion helps to understand about why they make decisions, and why they do what they do, right? Uh, school, what we learn in school is very important. 
We also have a link between the nation's literacy rate and its economic development. So some countries have better literacy rate than other countries. Literacy rate means the percentage of people who can read and write. Okay. So uh, if we have a higher literacy rate, we're more developed. And the media, because this has replaced family time a little bit. The t people watch TV and the internet. They can get more culture from the media. So government, we, government can have propaganda through the media and laws. Uh, for example, in Singapore, they have very strict law on throwing the chewing gum on the street, right? Very strict laws about everything. So if you meet the people from Singapore, they seem very well behaved, right? Do you understand? They seem very well behaved and correct. They're not going to break the law. Okay. Uh, Corporations, they, uh, like Microsoft, invented Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word, right? They spread this innovation into the society and help pe they, help, they want people to change their culture. We'll talk about later, uh, Nescafe did an interesting experiment in Japan because Japanese people didn't drink coffee. So they, they, Nestle introduced the coffee ice cream to the kids in Japan, because they want to change the culture in Japan. So the kids eat the, ate the coffee ice cream. Ten years later, Nestle was able to sell coffee in Japan, because the kids remembered the taste of the ice cream from when they were children, and they had a happy memory of eating the ice cream, right? Do you have a happy memory of eating ice cream when you were young? <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yes. So you remember, if you have, a, I have a happy memory of eating chocolate my, when I went to the park. So now I, I like chocolate maybe too much, right? Because I associate the taste with the happy memory. So the Japanese people associate the coffee taste with the happy memory of the childhood and eating ice cream. Okay. So culture changed. The older people in Japan drinking tea and the younger people drinking coffee, right? Did you eat much bondigi when you were a child? No, I didn't. No? You have no happy memory of going to Everland and eating bondigi? I had cricket. crickets. Crickets? Yeah, crickets. I remember when I went to Everland, it was very funny. They had some stall. It was selling ice cream and bondigi. <laughs> on the same stall. Let me try. No, I tried the ice cream, but... Actually, the smell of the bondigi was off-putting, so maybe I wasn't even going to buy the ice cream. Well, I didn't understand why they sell the bondigi and ice cream because I couldn't understand somebody goes up to the stall, hmm, ice cream or bondigi? I have bondigi! <laughs> well, I guess maybe the Korean people eat at the bondigi when they were kids, so now they think it's quite tasty. So they have good memories. They went to Everland and ate bondigi. Is there anybody here who went to Everland and ate bondigi? <laughs> No? Never? No? Okay. <laughs> so, all of these things make up uh, the culture. Is influenced by all of these things. So, uh, in China, what is the ma major religion? Traditionally, Confucianism, Taoism, Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism. So we have some, uh, in Confucianism you have the, like, the educated person, right? In Taoism you have the harmony. So we can see some difference between the Western culture and the Asian culture, right? Maybe Taoism is saying that people should all be in harmony, right? Harmony is very important. So we can see, if we study about the religions in the different countries, we can see that it affects people's ideas and thinking very strongly. So, then the elements of culture, values, rituals, symbols, beliefs, and thought processes. So the first one is values. Uh, Gert Hofstede is the most famous researcher, as we mentioned. So we're going to look at his uh, web page.
So Gert Hofstad did a study of all of the IBM workers. In every country, IBM was present. So IBM, IBM was present in you know a hundred different countries around the world. So he went around to IBM, and he just interviewed all the workers, right? And he tried to understand the culture of the IBM workers from the different countries. Now there was some criticism of his research because people said. The IBM worker is just a certain type of person. They're a professional, middle-class person. Okay? So, but that's what he based his, his uh, studies on. Okay? And he has this website. And then we can compare countries on different uh, factors. So we can select a country like uh, China. Um, and uh, it tells us some of the things about China, and we can compare this, let's say, to South Africa or South Korea, very close to each other there. So we can see what's the same and what's different between China and South Africa, what kind of cultural things. So he has six uh, things, but we can look at the first one is, is power distance. So we can look at power distance. This measures the tolerance of social inequality. So I said that Irish people really don't like power distance. Why? Because in Eng the English system, they like to make the power distance. I'm better than you. I'm a lord. And you're not a lord. Right? But other countries, they have a higher power distance. It power distance is like, can I talk to the CEO? So if I'm in Norway or Sweden or Ireland, they have low power distance. I'm the intern. You understand intern? Yeah. Maybe I meet the CEO at the water machine. Okay? We use the same water machine. And the CEO asks me my opinion about something. Or maybe we might even go for lunch together sometime. Okay? There is no power distance between us. But in another country, uh, like Mexico, uh, they have a high power distance. So I can't talk to the CEO. Right? If I want to talk to the CEO, I have to go through different layers of people. I have to call his secretary and another secretary. I can't easily communicate with the CEO. And the CEO maybe is followed around by some different people and very hard, thinks he's much higher than the other people, right? So we, have, uh, we can compare China. China has a higher, higher power distance than South Africa. So it explains here about power distance. So how is power distributed equally or unequally? So at 80, China is a higher ranking of power, power distance. It's a society that believes that inequality amongst people is acceptable. So they think, yeah, it's okay that that person is treated in a high position and that person is not treated in such a high position. Okay? The subordinate superior relationship uh, means that there can be some power abuse by the superiors. Okay? Uh, so the person at the higher level can abuse, do you understand, to abuse their power? Yeah. They can force the person at the lower level to do things that they shouldn't be doing, right? Whereas in the other power distance society, they're going to say, no, I'm not doing that. They're just going to say, you can't make me do that, right? right. That's not my job. <clears throat> so individuals are influenced by authority, formal authority. So somebody has the formal title or formal authority, then we think, oh, that's very important. But in another country, they think title is not important, right? So even some, in Korea, some students called me professor. But I say, don't call me professor, just call me Chris, right? Because I'm not used, in Ireland, they don't call the teacher professor. They just call them by their first name, okay? So just, you can see Korea maybe has high power distance, a little bit like China. Whereas Ireland is going to be very low. So, also the... This can be, maybe I don't dress as formally as the other teachers, right? In Ireland, they wouldn't dress as formally, that kind of thing. So, uh, South Africa has a lower power distance. Uh, then the next one is individualism. So we can see China, very low individualism. Individualism means... Uh, do we think about ourselves, or do we think about everybody? I or we? Right? In Korea, you have Uri. Yeah, we do. Uri this and Uri that. Yeah. Uri Chib, Uri Cha, Uri... <laughs> huh? With my wife, I just say my. My car. 
not our car, it's mine. <laughs> right? Because I'm from individualist society. So I use the word I more than we, and people think more about themselves, especially in the company. They change the company much more quickly and easily in the, in the, in the individualist country, right? They just think, what's best for me? The other company is better for me? I'm going there. They give me a higher salary or a better condition, I'm gone, right? But in an, another country, people might think more about the group or the company or the family situation, okay? So in collectivist societies, people belong in groups that take care of themselves in exchange for loyalty. So there are positive, we can't say that one is better than the other. We can't say collectivist is better than individualist or individualist is better than collectivist, okay? Mm, if you look at teamwork, some teams work like that we don't have to have a good relationship and competition is the best way, right? We compete with each other and that makes me work harder because of the competition against you, right? But other teams think, no, we have to cooperate. Okay, if we cooperate, then we can get a better result. So, both of those things can give better results. It's just different ways of thinking uh, among people. So, China is a highly collectivist culture, where people act in the interest of the group and not necessarily of themselves. Do Chinese people like going on holidays by themselves or in a group? In a group, right? That's one example. Chinese people, do they, do you understand Renau? Renau, am I pronouncing correctly? Chinese people, when they're shopping, they all like shopping together in, in a big, when there's a lot of people there. How do you say that in Chinese? Hmm? Begins with like or sound. There's a lot of people like that it's very busy and there's a lot of people. They don't like shopping in the shop where nobody is there. They like every, a lot of people are in the shop. That's true, that's true. Like you're going to a restaurant? Yes. In a restaurant, and there are a lot of customers that are eating here, so we will believe, we can believe, oh, that must be a good restaurant, so we will go. Mm. So, so people like to all go together, like that, right? Uh, <coughs> then the next one, so we looked at individualism and collectivism. I think this is the biggest difference between Korea and the US, or Korea and the UK, okay? Uh, individualism and collectivism. For me, this was a challenge when I came to Korea. Uh, for example, I met some Korean people with my wife, and they want to have noodles for lunch, and I want to have sandwich for lunch. Very simple thing, right? I don't think it's a problem. We're in the same place, there's bread and there's noodles. So what's the problem if I eat bread and make my own sandwich? No problem, right? But the Korean people are not happy. I can see their face. <laughs> Chris is not eating noodles. <laughs> Why is he not eating noodles with us together? Right? They feel bad because I decided to have a sandwich. So I have to try and adapt in Korea, right? I have to say, okay, I'll eat noodles together then. Then everybody's happy, right? <laughs> He's having noodles together. We're all happy together as a group. Now. Huh? You're not happy though. I'm not happy? <laughs> mm, but I have to adapt a little bit. <laughs> so, is that true? Korean people like doing the things together? Even when you go to the restaurant, in Korea often it's just the one type of food. Everybody has to eat the same food, right? In Europe they have a very different menu. So people can choose the different menus and different what they want, right? Uh, <coughs> then... They explained in, in China, we were playing on the, when I was studying in China, we were playing on the soccer team, the, the Chinese soccer team. And there was one Italian guy, he used to play for a professional team in Italy, but he got injured. So he was a very good soccer player. And the soccer team was doing very well. But one weekend, he wanted to go on a trip with his girlfriend. So he didn't play with the soccer team, just went on the trip. But the head of the university course was very angry with him. She explained that, you know, you have to understand the Chinese culture. You can't just think about yourself, right? He was just thinking about himself, not the team or not the group. Just went off to play by himself, right? Or went away and didn't care about the team. So we have that. We can have, this is one of the main problems 
And I guess if you work in the Western culture, you might be upset because the people don't think about you that much, right? They're not that thinking about you and including you. And maybe they just keep separate their work life and their personal life, that kind of thing. So uh, the next one is uncertainty avoidance. So uncertainty avoidance means uh, do we like risk or we don't like taking risks? Okay, so how can we tolerate uncertainty? Are we okay with uncertainty or we're not okay with uncertainty? So let's have a look at uh, China and South Africa. Right, we saw South Africa definitely more individualist than China. Okay, uncertainty avoidance, China has a lower score than South Africa. So let's look down here. So China has a low score in uncertainty in avoidance. Okay. So Chinese are comfortable with ambiguity. Do you understand ambiguity? Yeah. Ambiguity means we're not, we don't have to keep exactly to the law, or we don't have to keep exactly the rules. Okay. So the Chinese language has ambiguous meanings, which can be difficult for Western people to follow. Chinese are adaptable and entrepreneurial. Okay. So a lot, they have a lot of small businesses. So people like taking risk and setting up their own business in China. <coughs> but uh, on the other hand, uh, we have other countries who don't like, people don't like taking risks. They fe feel uh, maybe safer. So it depends on the culture. Other things we see here are masculinity, long-term orientation. China has a strong long-term orientation. It means they're thinking more about the long-term. A okay, little bit related to individualism. Okay, they're thinking more about the group and they're thinking more about the long term. But in South Africa, thinking more about the individual and more about the short term. Okay, uh, the capitalism is a little bit more biased towards short term, thinking about short term and short term profits. Okay, so we have the different uh, culture. Uh, so, uh, do you have any question about this? Gert Hofstede, one. So we can just quickly look at the US and Korea, right? Because that's um, many of the world's biggest companies are from the US, right? And then you guys are from Korea. So what are the main differences uh, between the US and Korea? So we can see power distance. You, Korea, China was 80, Korea is 60. US is 40, Ireland is going to be about 20, okay? Uh, Individualism, I said, was the biggest one, right? We can see the US has the highest individualism in the world. And Korea has one of the lowest individualism in the world, right? They like uh, collective and the Wii's. Okay? Even if I think about my wife's parents, I don't really think my wife's parents is my responsibility that much, right? It's different. Even my own parents. Right? People have more individualist thinking. We don't get much help from our parents, and then when our parents are older, we don't help them much either. Right? Whereas my wife might think, well, we need to help my parents and your parents more than me. Right? So I have more individualist thinking than her. Okay? So uh, uncertainty avoidance is quite high in Korea, so Korean people are not don't take risks that much. They said this is one problem for Korea economy because Korea has a very good uh, science and mathematics education and they make a lot of patents. Do you understand patents? Patent is a design for a new product. So they register a lot of patents. But not many Korean people leave their job and start up their own companies. So because of that, they could suggest their idea in their company and the company might say, no, we're not doing that idea. In the US, the person might say, that's a good idea, I'm leaving and starting my own company. Right? But in Korea, people don't tend to do that as much. Right? They just tend to say, okay, then maybe it wasn't such a good idea, I'll keep working in the company. Okay? So one of the reasons is this culture of uncertainty avoidance, not liking to take the risk that much. Koreans, very strong long-term orientation. The US, very short-term orientation. Okay? U.S. mainly thinking about 
just I need to get the profits soon. Korea thinking more in the long term. So this is values, cultural values that people have. So we can see here the list of many countries, right? On these three scores. Arab countries, low individualism, high power distance. Okay, Great Britain, high individualism, like the US. Okay, low power distance, and so on. So one thing we can notice here is some of the countries which speak the same language have some of the same values. So Australia, Canada, countries which were Ireland, countries which were formerly in the British Empire, speak English, they seem to have similar cultural values in this area. Okay? Uh, some of the European countries, like German-speaking countries, have different cultural values, again. So we can have Spanish, Spain, Italian, and South America. They, again, they have a group of different cultural values. We can make a group there. So then, do you have any question about uh, Hofstede? So, uh, at home we're going to do this internet task about Hofstede. So, find, it's on the, just at the end of this section of the PPT. Find the main cultural differences. You can choose any con two countries using the Hofstede index, right? It doesn't have to be Korea and France. If you can't think of two countries, Korea and France. But just compare two countries on the Hofstede in index. Use at least three things like the power distance and the uh, uncertainty avoidance and individualism, right? So compare two countries and then I'll ask you in the next class which two countries did you choose and what is the main difference between the two countries? Okay? Do you understand what you have to do for Thursday's, before Thursday's class? Right. Friday's Friday. class? Yes? So just go, just Google Gert Hofstede. Right? It's quite simple. Just his name. Or you can just go to this link. Use this link from the PPT. Okay? Compare the two countries. No, no, no. Choose two countries. Choose any two countries. Different countries. Okay? So then let's finish there for today. Thank you.